Hello everybody, my name is Darklack, and in this video, we are going to be going over the 7.7 .7 mid-chapter update. There is quite a lot in this, and I want to give my personal thoughts and opinions on this uh, mid-chapter update. We're going to go through the entire patch notes and show you everything of what is new with this patch, and what I think is going to affect the meta in here in terms of the new released twins and the others part changes but if you guys do enjoy it be sure to leave a like and sub as we are getting really close to 500 subs and that is our big goal for right now so if any little bit helps i appreciate it but without further ado let's jump straight into this so first things first we are gonna go over the new store the new store is available replacing the previous one featured page latest releases and chapters and the addition of weekly gift feature now, this is the part that's pretty cool, especially for newer players. The weekly gift allows players to claim free rewards during multiple weeks. If activated, rewards are renewed per week, meaning that unclaimed ones are discarded when the next week is reset. And what that looks like is in the store, which by the way, this is the new store. It looks really clean. I like it. Down here, there is a free gift, and this free gift basically will give you uh, free things. I don't know all of what it has from when I opened it just uh, now, before recording this video. It gave me 300,000 blood points, so this is really solid because it means that you don't have to grind that much, and it resets every week, so you'll get something new per week, I'm guessing. But I'm not sure. It gave me 300,000 blood points overall, though. It is really cool. And it just looks really clean. And we're going to go over some of these things up here soon as well. All right. Next, we got the specials page. A dedicated page to show all special offers currently available in the game. Which is pretty nice for some people who don't know that there's some special offers going on. It now has its own dedicated place, which is really nice. All right, then the collections page houses all collections that exist in the game and shows their content. Players can also unlock cosmetics directly from there. I'll show you guys what that looks like. So if you go to collections, you can now see all of the different collections that there are inside DBD, and you can get cosmetics directly from here. And I think this is really cool. So like, Let's say you really like the alien chapter. You could go here now and go through all the different uh, things for the alien collection and all the things that came out with that. And I think that that is really nice. It'll help. It's a, just a nice little quality of life thing and it's just nice to have. So that is really nice. Let's go over this. Killer and Survivor's dedicated wardrobes, new separated independent page is for killers and survivors that allow for a quick mix of matching of all characters and their cosmetics. And now this is a pretty cool and big change in my opinion. Up here, they now have a killers and survivors tab. So if you go to it, you'll see that all of the killers are here and then survivors are all here. I really like how this looks. My only issue is the fact that it kind of mixes these in, so you can't really, like, see the things that you own. The only way you know it's owned is if it has a little tag. If it was me, I personally would have done what they did before and make it grayed out at the bottom for the ones that you don't own and put all of the ones you do own at the top. But with this, the nice thing is you can see the perks for different characters like for this this these are all the jake perks and if you hit this you'll see the perks that belong to dwight which is really useful and then same thing with customizations you can go through and see all of the different customizations which is really nice and all of the different cosmetics overall really solid and now it has its own dedicated space for the bio so it's not very like cluttered up same thing with killers again I kind of wish that they made it so that these uh, were grayed out and were at the bottom so I can easily tell which ones I don't own and quickly find it, but that's fine. But 
the powers are also here for killers, which I think is pretty cool. It's nicer for new players to get. And the other cool thing that they added is you can now preview Moris, and it also applies to special Moris. For example, the Trapper. I think that that in itself is a massive plus for DBD and their store. Honestly, a good change for them on that end. But again, I do wish that the owned stuff and the not owned stuff would be shown differently, like how it is here. All of these are at the bottom versus these are the ones you don't own. I wish it was like that for everything. But with that all being said, that's basically everything for the store changes. And then mix and match specifics. Players can now select characters and cosmetics without having to equip them immediately. Clicking on an option allows uh, players to preview the character and cosmetic, which is really nice because before it would uh, switch to the one you were already wearing. So you couldn't really see the um, different cosmetics and mix and match them before you equipped them. Now you can, which is really, really nice. Being able to preview allows players to preview pieces from different locked and unlocked cosmetics. Mix and matching options will now be able to try them out before unlocking them, which is really nice. Match details menu. This one I haven't seen yet, but we're going to check it out together. The match details menus now allow players to review perks. During a match, when opening the match details window, escape on computers, players can see their equipped perks. Hovering on perks and offerings allows players to see the tooltips and read their description. This seems like a really good quality of life thing for beginners. Let's go ahead and check that out really quick, shall we? Alrighty, so we loaded into a game, and as you can see when we hit escape, first of all, it's nice that it separates the offerings from the survivors from your offering, but look, if you hover over everything, it'll actually tell you exactly what each and every one of these perks do. I think this is massive for beginners because some people won't remember what their perks do. And this is an amazing way to see uh, and remind yourself what the different perks do. I think this is an absolutely amazing change. The only thing that I also wish was added is that they added the add-ons thing. Because if you're going to go ahead and add the perks, you might as well add the uh, add-ons for killer somewhere over here as well. But... I think this is really awesome. It also has the little map info over here, which is really nice. Overall, really, really solid. This is a really good quality of life update, so good on the devs. Now for the real bread and butter of this update, the killers and perk updates. Let's go ahead and read through it. First of all, the killer update, the twins. The visual terror radius accessibility setting will now include Victor's grunt. That's pretty cool. Victor will now glow red whenever he's vulnerable to being crushed and white when he's not. That's going to be helpful for newer players so that they can learn what that does. That's pretty solid. Charlotte can now recall Victor at any point when while he is unbound. I... Don't play twins. We're gonna play twins in the next video, which if you want to see that, be sure you're subscribed. But I've heard from a twins main that this is really good. A new icon has been added to indicate the moment when Victor can be recalled. That is gonna be nice, especially for accessibility for newer players learning the twins. This will definitely help. Decrease the time it takes to switch back to Charlotte to 1.5 seconds. It was 3 seconds. That is a massive buff, literally half the time. That is really good. Decrease the time it takes to unbind Victor by 0 0.75 seconds. That is a 25% buff. Really nice. Decrease the time it takes to charge Victor's pounce to 0 0.85 seconds. Was 1 second. That is a solid buff. Increase the cooldown for Victor to come back after being crushed to 10 seconds. Okay, so basically it'll kind of not reward you if you're playing bad, but it looks like the rest of this just seems really good. 
we're gonna have to try out the twins and see how they feel as a new player picking them up for the first time because this the twin seems really appealing right now so we're gonna have to check that out add-ons tiny fingernail decreases victor's unbind time by 33 percent was 50 cent okay so a bit of a nerf there and then decreases pounce time by 10 percent was 20 percent okay so the add-ons received a little bit of a nerf but overall the twins seem to have gotten a massive buff so we're gonna make a video on that here soon killer update on blight improved collision detection to reduce cases where blight slides off of objects now yes the sliding off of objects was never really meant to happen but i know from like pro players that this it removes a lot of the skill ceiling with blight but it also kind of increases it because now you have to be a lot more careful of where and when you use his bounces. So for people who just don't hug tech or slide off of different things as Blight, this doesn't really do anything, but it makes it harder to, for people to play him for sure. Add-ons, his shredded notes, decreases the time to recharge a rush token by 0.5. Three, three seconds remove downside that's a buff to that add-on okay summoning stone increases the initial rush duration by 0 0.5 that's a rework i don't play blight so i don't know how all of these are i know that these are pretty big changes and then soul chemical increases the initial rush speed by five percent completely reworked so these i'm not sure as a i'm, I'm not a blight player so i don't know how well these are but it seems like that these two got changed like a nerf or something and then this just got buffed so that'll be interesting perk updates this is what i'm like looking at because i am not looking forward to like one of these so let's get through this ultimate weapon now activates for 15 seconds was 30 seconds now reveals uh survivors auras for three seconds instead of causing them to scream and show their location so it went from being countered by calm spirit to now distortion i have a feeling we're going to see quite a bit more distortion gamers if people are running this and then they increase the cooldown by like double I don't know how good Ultimate Weapon is going to be after this. I think it'll still be good, but I mean, it really doesn't make a difference for the aura reading because they'll see that they were inflicted with blindness. So I don't know how to feel about that because if they're smart, they're just going to see that they have blindness. I mean, it's still useful, but... I mean, it depends on if this will be useful. We'll have to see how good Ultimate Weapon is. Because it looks now like a pretty solid aura reading perk, but that cooldown is really long. So we'll have to see in an actual match. Decisive Strike. Increase the stun duration to 5 seconds. Was 3 seconds. Yeah, that that's going to be fun. I'm sure, I'm sure that this perk isn't going to be overused to all hell in this patch. I am not excited for the Decisive Strike buff. Because it was already a strong perk. But now the stun duration is 5 seconds, which is an insane amount of time. So we'll see. I have a feeling that Decisive Strike is going to be on basically everyone, and that will be annoying. And then we got Adrenaline. The burst of speed now lasts for 3 seconds, was 5. Adrenaline no longer activates if you are hooked or carried when the gates are powered. Adrenaline no longer causes you to wake up when facing the nightmare. Good. Nerf this perk. This perk was way too broken in endgame. Yes, it rewards you for making it to the endgame, but the fact you were able to get off of a hook and get out of the uh, killer's grasp when they're carrying you if the endgame happens was just stupid. It was absolutely just... I don't get why this was even a thing in the first place, I'm glad to see that this got nerfed because adrenaline was really annoying in the end game. Some people will be like, oh, but it was an end game perk and it rewards you for doing well. Yeah, but adrenaline shouldn't be able to get you off of a hook. 
that's crazy that that's even a thing. Or get you out of the killer's grasp, and that speed boost was just insane. It basically made it so if the killer had a chance to win, they had zero chance to win because they're all the way across the map and they're all off of if they're running this. It, it's just a, it was just way too powerful. And then it should never cause you to wake up against Freddy. That's just such a, <laughs> this shouldn't affect a specific killer. So this adrenaline nerf was much needed. But in conclusion for the perk updates, I don't think ultimate weapons going to be very good anymore. We'll see. I have to test it out in an aura build, but I don't know. I mean, causing you to see the aura of survivors for five seconds if they enter your terror radius could be pretty solid, but that cooldown is really long. That's a really harsh cooldown. So we'll see. We'll see how good this is. In map changes, Haddonfield, this map has been difficult for players to enjoy. Tell me about it. We've made the decision to updating it, pr prioritizing gameplay quality. The length of the street was reduced. Line of sight blockers have been added. To the street removed any closed houses reduced the amount of tiles on the map thank god added gameplay and blockers to border tiles that's interesting that i think that just means people are gonna run to the outside of the map or that the outside of the map is safer i don't know how to feel about that but added openings in main building house to improve navigation and gameplay and park tiles have been revisited Gameplay mechanics. The generator damage interaction has been reviewed so that generators are actually damaged closer to the point where the hit lands to prevent letting go of the input early. Okay, so this is when you'd kick a gen and you'd think you'd kick it because the sound would go off, but it wouldn't actually kick the gen because you'll release it one second too early. This'll actually really be nice. Emblems, it'll no longer be possible to lose a pip after a match. This is nice. This is just nice because sometimes if you're on a losing streak, just losing a pip after pip, it will be annoying. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and check out uh, Haddonfield. Let's take a look at that. Alrighty, so we're loading into the new Haddonfield, and I already can see quite the difference. There are a lot more cars around here. That is a lot of cars. This, These cars used to not be here. That is a lot of cars, and this tile just seems way more complicated this time around. Let's see. How does uh, going into these houses play? There's a tile in this house. So, this seems interesting. I'm not sure if this is going to be a stupidly survivor-sided map still. Because this is definitely, um, a, it looks a lot more playable. But we'd have to get into an actual match to kind of see that happen. So, let's see back here. This area is just a complete dead zone now. So that's interesting. Back here, they, they removed that, uh that house that had that really annoying god palette which is really nice actually unless they moved it here and then i'm gonna eat yep they moved it here i ate my words it's fine <laughs> so then let's see here this house seems a little more playable it's not like you can loop the killer for forever this is a lot tighter though that's something for sure um, let's see. Up here, this is still the same. There's a gen up here. There's two ways they can leave now, technically three. Which, I'm not sure how to feel about that. But, I mean, it gives survivors a chance to escape, so it's probably a good thing. There's a locker and pallet over here. The exit gate is here. Which is interesting. I don't remember it being there originally. Let's go ahead and quickly test out the damage thing. Okay, that is a lot nicer. Also, I don't know 
that felt faster. I don't know if they actually made it faster, but kicking a gen just felt significantly faster there. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. But that felt a lot faster. There's now a tile here, which is interesting. It's gonna be annoying as hell to play around this tile. Because this is a very thick wall. So getting to survivors, unless you're on like this side, is gonna be really annoying to play. I don't really like this wall. This might be uh, like batting him bad or close to it, because this is a large tile. I don't know how to feel about that. They made these bushes taller, so it's harder to see people as well. That's interesting. Overall, I think this is still a very sur uh, survivor-sided map. And then they have this whole thing, which is interesting. Is this the shack? Wait, no, this might be the shack that was really annoying. Yeah, it is. I have a feeling this map is going to be even worse for Killer. At least from what I'm seeing initially. I could be wrong. But this is just... This is awful. Like, this is just literally... Um... This is as bad as, uh... The other map. Battingham Preschool in some ways. Though, there's a, definitely a couple more open areas. So... I don't know how to feel about this map change. I'm gonna have to test it on a thing from what my initial thoughts are. I'm a little scared because this looks now even more like a survivor sighted map. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Overall though, I do think that the kicking felt faster. And it's definitely an interesting map. We will have to see how it goes. The other thing is for killers, you can see that they changed the border background to be this nice little red, which I actually really like. It looks really nice though. I'm pretty sure there was a blood prestige border before. I think that that still applies. I would be curious to see what that looks like. But this looks really clean. But yeah, guys, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for staying until the very end. If you guys did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and sub as we are getting really close to 500 subs and each one of you guys would be very much appreciated. But with that being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think of this new mid-season uh, mid update. But yeah, guys, that was it for me. My name is Darklick, and until next time, peace out.